Well, the reason we're sharing testimony and I'm sharing my testimony is publicly, I should say, is that when I've shared it privately, people are inspired and seek healing and increase prayer life. After God healed me of a very tangible leg pain, excruciating, that he might heal me of other things. One of the things I've noticed is I tended to get, um, I, it's a, like a feeling of being down in the afternoons often when I'm alone. And I was reading a book on healing and the author said, you are lonesome for God when you have these feelings. What your experience is, is a homesickness feeling because you're not with God at that moment. So pray at those times. And I do, and it goes away. Um, and I've experienced these throughout my life. I just didn't know what the remedy was. Where you have a period sometime in the day it always seems to hit me in the early afternoon. I don't know why, but I'll just do a prayer now. And uh, that seems to dispel the loneliness. My whole outlook has improved. My f faith has gotten stronger. In my small group, the testimony, my testimony has inspired several others to try healing. And I think our small group discussions have improved since we've been doing this and talking about it. Now, some are still skeptical, but everyone's different and everyone comes in their own time. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nativity Small Group Podcast. It is great to be with all of you this week, everyone. I'm Kelly, and I am joined with Mia, who you have all gotten Hi. to know quite well over this series. And uh, there's still a lot more to go. So the video that you just watched, that testimony, was from Gary. And I just, I, I adore him because yeah. he's like an every man's man yep. kind yep. of guy. And if you have not yet seen his um the, the the first part really of his testimony which which was shared in father michael's message this weekend uh be sure to go back and watch that too um because then this is kind of the 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 next step if you will of gary's story that we are bringing into small groups this week and so mia you were you part of the healing with gary uh no i don't think he came up to our team but it was okay. after mass last year last and, year um it's just an amazing story just yeah. the, the whole thing how god um touched him his pain was gone right away and also his wrestling with it being with actually being healed you know um that was a, a few months yeah well and that's part of his story that you, uh, you may have heard it in mass if not again go back and watch it but I loved that because that to me made him just so uh, relatable that something so miraculous as this could happen to you, but yet you live in doubt for a while and you keep it to yourself and you don't want to share it. Yeah. Um, I think that that kind of leads us into actually one of the questions this week. You know, we think that um, if God is is all good and all knowing, why would he not protect us from pain like this? Why would he not protect us from sickness? Right. I mean, that, that is a, a, a huge question. Why does evil exist and why does it affect us? And if God's all powerful, um, why can't he just prevent anything? And that goes into um, how much he does value our, our will mm -hmm. and our free will. Mm -hmm. um, so some things are caused by other people or accidents, or things like that. Um, so he definitely, I think, understanding it's not his nature to cause harm. Mm -hmm. His nature is good. He is love. He's truth. And we can even learn from his own word what his nature is. Um, 
we have um, a, a scripture from um, Exodus that um, he revealed himself mm-hmm. as, you know, I am the Lord God who heals you, Jehovah Rapha. That's one of the earliest titles that he revealed, and it shows his heart is for restoring what was lost mm-hmm. in the fall. And also through the fall comes death, disease, and um, and sin. So the whole mission of God is to is to restore, to make new, and he does that mm-hmm. through Jesus. Mm-hmm. But so why do people... Sometimes uh, when we're praying with people, we'll, we will hear them wrestling sure. with, you know, did God do this to me? Or I always thought God was just doing this to me. And I, and in part of that, of the prayer with them is to help them see that, no, God has a plan for healing in Jesus and totally loves this, this person and wants to help them. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's a little bit of a wall that has to kind of break and come down in order to receive, right? you know. Right, and I would imagine too that walls like that are not just built over a, a moment or one right. thing, that it's it can be generational. Oh yeah. It can be decades yeah. long. Mm-hmm. And so when it pertains to healing, does that wall need to be completely broken down before healing can happen? Um, I, or is I, it a realization that the wall exists? I, I mean, I think even just realizing that the, that, um, it's it's when when God intervenes, He becomes real, mm-hmm. He's really in our face. Um, I and so when God actually does something in my body, in my life, that's going to improve it. That's you know His way of of showing, getting that message of love through to that person. Sometimes you know, it just um, asking someone, "Can we pray for you?" Mm-hmm. and they say yes. That's a step towards that. Sure hopefully happening in, in that moment. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think Gary says something else in the video where um, his physical healing, which was an amazing thing, led to more more healing in his in his life. And I think that's really typical, actually, because really? yeah, I think people come for one thing. I know I've had prayer for myself for one thing. And then there's there's more to do in our lives. And, sure. And, you know, God wants to touch it all. He cares for it all. So. I love that point. It's not just about that one moment, but it's also um, he wants it all. And and I love thinking about God in that context is that, you know, it's he's, he's not just there for the pain or for the emotional suffering you may be going through. He he wants to heal you, but then he wants all of you. That's how much he loves us. He he wants to encompass everything about us. And I was th- I was thinking about it like he didn't have to do any of this. If this was just about our soul. Mm. Jesus mm-hmm. could have just come and said, "Believe in me and it's all about obedience." And that's not how Jesus modeled it. Mm-hmm. He went and he he touched every every person that came to Jesus was healed. Yeah. And then now this is the kingdom of God. I am the Messiah. Believe in me. That was he showed them, mm-hmm. and then he gave them a, a, an opportunity to follow him. Mm-hmm. And that's that's just, it shows you God's priority. It's about your heart. It's about relationship. And then out of love for him and receiving that, we, we want to follow him closer. Mm-hmm. We want to, you know, become Christ followers. So what? how might Jesus want to show the works of God through healing then? I, I think I am feeling that answer, but what do you think? Well, um, we share other good news, right? right. We were right. talking about uh, earlier, we are, were very quick to share with people we love in our life, good things to do, good, mm-hmm. excellent people to recommend, right? Good restaurants. So you went to a restaurant, you're happy to tell everybody this great experience you had. And right. part of that is because you get to be the hero in the story. Right. And it just, and so when, <laughs> when God does something in my life, um, I could just keep that for myself. Mm-hmm. It's definitely the truth to give him the glory. Um, but there's, I love this revel, um, verse from Revelations. It's uh, 19, the Re- Revelation 1910. It's the um, the uh, testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I don't actually have that on, on, the, on the scripture <laughs> verse, sorry, Shannon. But when we testify to what Jesus <laughs> did, um, we will see more of it. Test- testimony means do it again. So when we testify, oh. we will see more of what God has done in one life. We're going to see more of it. And so when someone gets healed, hopefully in your groups, you are praying for each other and you're believing for God to do something and you see something and then you tell people. Right. You tell many people because you'll see more of it. Right. 
So, and again, we put it into such easy, easily um, interpreted context in you know talking about a favorite restaurant or a favorite contractor or you know we we you know when you have a newborn baby, sleep begets sleep. So the good the good will bring in more good. Right. And right. but yet the the culture that we are surrounded with when it comes to anything miraculous is oh hands off we don't want to go there like right. that's that's crazy but god is trying to fight through all of that to say no it's real and look at the amazing things i can do a lot more for you than get you a good steak at xyz <laughs> right. you know and he cares about it all that's all he yeah. cares about our body he cares about our emotional state our heart he cares about our past right it, right it's it's letting him into all of that and um and seeing what what he wants to do with it, and what I love about this too, um, in uh, Mark, the end of Mark, um, chapter uh, sixteen, mm -hmm. Jesus says, and it's to everybody there. It's not just to the apostles. It's to everyone there who's witnessing his ascension. Go into all the world and preach the good news of the kingdom of God, and um, these signs will follow those who believe. So he didn't say mm -hmm. that just the twelve, which was like the priesthood. It was not it was to all believers and then at the end of that um verse verse 20 says that the lord worked with them confirming his word through accompanying signs and what i love about that is that this is for all believers this is not a sacramental thing we have mm -hmm. the sacraments and they're amazing gifts from god that uh usually the, the priest does almost all the sacraments except you know marriage mm -hmm. um but this is for all of us. Jesus wanted to spread his mission out to every single believer and gave them authority to do it. And mm. that's what I'm hoping we'll see. That's what you're doing. <laughs> that's what you and the healing team are doing. And we are so glad that you're doing it. It's such a blessing oh. to all of us. It's really fun. Yeah, actually. it's really fun. <laughs> Okay, I'll I'll remember to remind you how much fun you're having. It's also when exhausting. See, when you see I've God move, told. when you see God move, it's it's. It's um, like nothing else. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I can't even imagine the literal electricity that you feel in that moment. But yeah. we could go on and on. But it's we time could. for you guys to get into your group. So, Mia, would you mind praying for sure. us here as yes. we enter? Um, Father, I just thank you so much for what you're doing. I thank you for um, bringing healing to us through Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross. I thank you for the Holy Spirit dwelling within us and um, leading us. And Father, I just ask right now that you would send your Holy Spirit to everybody listening and watching this podcast and fill them with a desire to get to know you more, with um, an openness to um, wanting healing in their life if needed. And I do ask for you to confirm your word um, through signs and wonders in, in our community and that we would hear your testimony about it, Lord. Um, so I thank you and I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we hope you guys have a great conversation and have a great week. Thanks so much for participating in small groups. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. You can be a part of our mission to love God, love others, and make disciples by sharing this video. We are grateful that you're part of this community.